Hello and welcome back. Today's video is going to be a topic that is a little bit heavy for some. So, um, I don't want to talk much about it. I kind of just want to get right into it. So with that being said, grab some popcorn, grab some tea, in my case, Coca-Cola. And let's get right into the video. So, I'm working on a local theater project here in Wisconsin. Um, the other night, uh, we were having a little staff powwow, and one of the staff members turns to me and asks, how are you always so happy? I looked at her, and I laughed, and she was like, why? Like, tell me your trick. What's, why are you always happy? And I looked at her and said, jokes on you, if you only knew. I wouldn't say I'm not happy, um, because I'm much happier than I was in high school, but I'm definitely not this happy, chipper, 100% all the time person that I tend to be. So, if you have not picked up on it, today's talk is depression and anxiety. Which we are good friends. We go way back, sis. All the way back. Probably to about... It really started hitting me like middle of freshman year, sophomore year of high school, which is actually perfect because we should talk about where it all started from. So when I was in high school, um, I grew up in a smaller town in Wisconsin, and the second week of school, I ended up getting a water bottle thrown at my head. Um, the next day, maybe a couple days, I don't remember the exact time period, I got an orange peel thrown at my head. Then it was a banana peel. Then it was people calling me fag. Then it was people making fun of me and telling me I'm not good enough. And after a while, you start believing them. And so it really started to take an effect on me. I always say that it didn't. But it did. Um, I was not completely out to my family, so I could not talk to them about these things. So I sat there and I held it all in. Um, another whole struggle, kind of going hand in hand with that, is when I was in high school, I never had that core group of friends that really cared for you no matter what. They were always by your side. They always had your back. I didn't have that when I was in high school. I had a couple of those friends, um, but they were all they were all older than me. So they all either graduated at the end of my freshman year or my best friend throughout high school, she graduated my sophomore year. So I was left alone. And that's another thing is I, what's the quote from, okay. Logan's gonna come for me, because I was not a fan of this movie. So, when I was in high school, I very much lived by the quote, we accept the love we think we deserve. Looking back at it, one thing I would change in high school is I would get better friends, a better support system. I don't care if they would have been the weird kids. I don't care if they would have been the people who don't do anything except sit in their basement and play Dungeons and Dragons, they might have been better friends than the friends I had in high school. And don't get me wrong, I did have some great friends whom we stayed close, but not close enough to know what was going on, if that makes sense. Um, so that's my one biggest regret, and... That's really where everything kind of stems from, is that 
I almost had to get thick skin right then and there. Because the second that water bottle hit my head, I felt defeated. But I had the rest of the day to go through. So I had to just get it done. And I think that's kind of what shaped me into the person I am today of the mentality of like, you can sit there and yell at me, you can sit there and say I'm the worst at my job, but guess what? I'm gonna get that job done and it'll be done that day. Because I'm very good at compartmentalizing everything and just shoving it in a drawer and not dealing with it. So that brings me to junior year. Trust me, I still did not have a, that great of friends, but um, junior year, it finally clicked. I had a teacher named Senora Williams, who was in charge of the student council. And she really took me under her wing and said, I want you to do student council. And then um, somehow miraculously, that really made me get out of my shell. And I ended up being elected student body president. So that was fun and fresh and cool. And it definitely helped with my confidence. I kind of realized like, I'm worth it. It is okay to be who I am. It is what it is. Just love yourself. And I then kind of blossomed. Um, I always stayed busy in high school because that is one way that I dealt with my depression in high school, which looking back was not smart. But it was to the point where like, I would wake up, I would go to school. I'd usually do my homework before school. So I'd wake up, I'd do my homework, I'd go to school. I'd go to work right after school, so school got done at 3. I'd work from like 3.30 until 6.30. I'd go to rehearsal from 6.30 to 10. I'd go home, make dinner, all that fun stuff, and sleep and repeat all again. I did that all of sophomore, junior, and senior year. Looking back, probably wasn't smart, but it is what it is. That's how I coped in high school. Um, and theater. Theater was a huge cope for me because the three hours, four hours you were at rehearsal, you didn't have to worry. I didn't have to worry about Ken Stetzer. I had to worry about whoever my character was in that moment. So that definitely helped me a lot when I was in high school. Um, but then senior year, I really blossomed. Um, still didn't have the most caring friends. But I had people who actually knew and knew things about me. I ended up being on prom court. Um, all of that fun preppy stuff, that was cool to say that it happened. Um, but yeah, so then I finished out high school, then went to a first year of college, talked to maybe two people I went to high school with. Again, they, we graduated high school and a lot of them tossed me to the curb and didn't care. Um, so... When you graduate, it really shows who your friends are. I finally had a breakdown at the end of my freshman year of college going into sophomore year of college, where I finally broke down to my mom and told her, I'm not okay, I need help. I've, I think one of the exact words, quotes I said to her was, I don't remember the last time I woke up feeling okay. And I'm sure as a mother that hit her like a ton of bricks. Um, but one thing I'm so thankful for is how my mom said, okay. And we immediately went online. Um, I got into some therapy. I saw a therapist for a while, which then ended up me being medicated. Um, so I always suggest to people, if you feel like you are not okay, if you cannot wake up happy, if you, something happens and you get in a rut that you cannot get yourself out of, it is okay to ask for help. I never thought it was okay. And then I did it. And I am forever thankful that I did it. Um, I would not be where I am today. I would not be in the relationship I am in today. I would not be making a substantial living for myself if it was not for me asking for help. And I guess the reason I'm making this video is for you to know it is okay to ask for help. 
it is okay to not have a million friends as long as you have those two friends who have your back no matter what. I am so incredibly thankful for the friends that I have today because no matter what, they would have my back. Um, this last year has kind of showed me some true friendships and not true friendships. As you all know, Maddie Kane has been on my channel many, many, many times. She is truly, truly, truly one of my best friends. We have had fights, we have had disagreements, but we always come back to each other and we always know how much we love each other and we will always be there for each other no matter what. If Maddie called me tonight and said, I have something going wrong with me, she lives about an hour and a half to two hours away. Um, if she called and said, I need your help, there's no doubt Logan and I would jump in our car right now and go help her. Um, and it's nice to finally feel like I have a friend who would do the same exact thing for me. Back to my point of why I'm making this video. If this video reaches out to one person to let them know that they are okay, and it is okay to ask for help, it is okay to reach out to people, that's all I want. I want everyone to know that they have a place in this world. I want everyone to know it is okay to not be okay. It is okay to show that you are not okay. When I'm very angry, I tend to just shut down, completely shut down. Don't talk, don't do anything, just shut down and stare. And that I'm still working on because I know that's not acceptable and I know that's not okay. But with depression and anxiety, it is a work in progress and it'll always be a work in progress. But if I can show somebody that it's worth that work in progress, that's what this is meant to do. I know it's hard. I know it really sucks. I know feeling like you're not worth it is not a good feeling. But just know you are worth it. Know you have many, many people who think you're worth it. Okay? There's one more thing I want to touch on, is... When you get into an, a relationship, it's going to be real hard. Because you are going to compare yourself you are going to want to make yourself the best you can be, and you're going to beat yourself up because you think you are not the best. But you have to trust in yourself that you are giving everything you can to that relationship. Um, we've been questioned a couple times about how Logan and I deal with our depression in our relationship and how depression affects our relationship. And in all honesty, a good couple, it should not affect your relationship. It should be, if someone is feeling depressed, if someone is feeling anxious, the other steps up and helps. And I'm so incredibly thankful to say that that's what happens in our relationship. If I'm having a bad, awful day where I can't pick myself up, Logan has always been there to pick me up. And I can never thank him enough for that. I know this was a heavy topic. I promise next week's video will be a lot lighter. I'm getting some really cool food sent in this week, so I'm hoping to maybe do a mukbang with some of them. Probably not. We'll see. But, as always, and especially in this video, no, I love you. Even if I've never met you before, I still love you. No matter what your situation is, somebody out there loves you. Please remember that, everybody. Somebody out there loves you. I hope you're having a wonderful day, evening, night, afternoon, whatever time of day it is where you are. I hope it's wonderful. Don't be afraid to like, comment, subscribe. I would love to hear your stories. I would love to hear your story about how you overcome depression. I would love to hear if you need help. I'm always here to reach out to people. So, with that being said, I look forward to hearing from you guys, and I hope you all have a wonderful night.